welcome to the second edition of the Maintenance Analytics Summit here in Stockholm. Mm -hmm. It's great having you with us and um, it's great to see Atlas Copco being represented today as well. Mm -hmm. Before we go on, uh, please introduce yourself, more about your background, your profile. Thank you. Very nice to be here also. Mm -hmm. uh, so my name is Rikard Hansen. I've been working with uh, we need Atlas Copco for one and a half year, so I'm fairly new to the industry, but then my background is actually from the software industry before that. Uh, actually, uh, started in just before the year 2000 with the startup, so I went through the, uh, the IT uh, hype around 2000, so I have a lot of experience from uh, maybe a bit uh, similar to what, what you can see within predictive maintenance and AI and uh, IoT. So I went through that journey. And, uh, and now I'm here and working with uh, Data Driven Services for, and I'm part of the management group for uh, the service division in mm -hmm. Atlas Copco. Um, Ricard, you gave a talk, and by the way, congratulations, mm -hmm. um, on a sustainable productivity in final assembly. Mm -hmm. How can IoT and analytics support this final assembly process? Can you just make a short recap of your key points? Yeah, the, um, the, the key point is, Doing final assembly is very much by producing items at high speed, with high quality, and you know have a high uptime. I mean, for instance, if you go to the car manufacturing industry, I mean, you want to produce as many cars as possible with yeah. you know, as little time as possible and with a high quality. Uh, and if, for instance, if you go to electronics, uh, I mean, maybe you have a huge volume of, of phones you need to produce within a very limited time, and you want everything to work. There should not be any failure. You, you really have to, to keep up the, the, spa, uh, the speed and, and ensure that you have the right quality. So IoT can, you know, it can be very, very helpful to you to take the things before they really happen. Uh, mm -hmm. So, um, Ricard, uh, we have spoken a lot today yeah. about the benefits of yeah, um, yeah. applying predictive mm. maintenance uh, activities. And I, we all agree that mm. it is much worthy. And according to McKinsey, um, this technique will help companies save 600, more than 600 billion of dollars by mm. 2025. Mm. But um, this is one side of it mm. because uh, technologies like IoT, mm. IIoT, they are helping companies mm. gather massive amounts mm. of data. Mm. But this is just one side. The other side is that according to the same report, many companies lack the capabilities to integrate these data for further um, exploration, mm, analytical mm, capabilities. Yeah, yeah. How true is this? Your comments on this? I mean, I, it, it's for sure true. Then I also think I, sometimes I think there is a naive approach also. They think AI hey, just will come in and solve everything. But at the end of the day, it's also about you know describing the use case, having you know in product management or operation people understanding the benefits of AI and, and, and working on the use cases. Uh, but that also, there's also another point of, okay, there is uh, the disruptive part of AI that really changes things the way we work, and that requires some guts to change maybe the existing business model, the, the, the existing way of working, uh, and that I think that is, a, I think that's a challenge because in in terms of you know how the infrastructure, the structure of the companies, how you know, how are they built, are they really encouraging? Entrepreneurship are they really encouraging startup mentality? So I think that is something to work on. I think some are doing that, uh, but I think that's an area where I mean most companies can improve. But on the other, I think there is also an evolution side of of, uh, of uh, analytics. I mean, small steps, small improvements. If you, you look five years, if you look back in five years' time, look back, there will probably you can see a lot of improvements made. But I think now when you look at it, you want to see some you know, disruptive, quick change or quick you know, uh, success. But I think it's, it's more of a it's continuous a uh, evolution of you know, improving the way you work. Mm -hmm. um, this was also discussed, uh, mentioned today, cloud and edge. Where will analytics be done? What are the factors? I mean, the, I, I, it's also very much back to, to use cases. I mean, let's for, say I mean, maintenance, for instance, uh, which we talk about today. I mean, you want to tell, I mean, this equipment, this tool uh, is about to break down. You need to you know, maintain it now, otherwise it will break down maybe in one week or two weeks or one month. I mean, okay. you, you will have some time. And in that case, cloud works pretty good. I mean, you don't have the, the, it's, not a, the, 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 it's not an immediate action required to do maintenance. It's more like, you know, it's time to do it. You know, if you don't do it within the time, then you, I mean, then, then you will have a problem. So in that case, cloud works pretty well. Mm -hmm. 
uh, in, uh, but in other cases, which is more related to edge, if you want to have a remediate, immediate action, if you want to have really short latency with, from, from the finding mm -hmm. to, the, to the action that you need to provide, I mean, for sure, that is, uh, then is edge is, is the case. Yeah. yeah. But I think, I mean, looking at that Skopko tools, that is very much more related to the performance of the tool. Maybe are they tuned the right way? Maybe there's an, the happening something that you need to retune it to adapt to the new things. Then you need to have the machine learning capabilities on the tool itself. Uh, but it's more of a self-adjusting self uh, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And what about the safety concerns? Yeah, that's something that we work on a lot. And we also see, for sure, a, a great fear and reluctancy to sharing data using cloud applications. And I think it's very much, if you look at, for instance, a, 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 a production plant, if you listen, if you go into the production network, you will already discover that most things are very open. There's not so much security on the device itself. So customers tend to you know, build a thick wall around the plant and say, well, let's keep it inside and don't have any uh, interaction with outside. And I think that is you know, the, the, the quick way of you know, handling security. But if you want to have the benefits from analytics, have the benefit of cloud, you need, need to find a way to open up. Uh, and, uh, but you know, giving the customer the right values, if you would do it, you would get this value. Uh, and then you know, step by step, you know, they will start talking about uh, to having the proper right security because there are solutions. But I think the, the safety critical part is the one thing to get data out and maybe produce a recommendation. But if you want to, maybe adjust or change things in the production from the outside. If you allow that, for sure, then you, you need to really ensure that you have the proper right security for that. So um, machine learning um, and AI as a broader term, um, they are being, let's say, transforming the way how businesses mm. are done, especially in the predictive maintenance field. Mm. And with these technologies, we have the abilities to process and produce massive amounts of data. Mm. So um, how far are we from an AI in autonomous maintenance, uh, uh, let's say, uh, adoption and implementation, considering all of these rapid developments of uh, key technologies, AI, I don't know. Um, what are the key pitfalls to avoid? if you yeah. want to achieve that? I think there are s some uh, things maybe related to you know, how things are working. Maybe there can be an adjustment that should be automatically done uh, based on analytics. But from, you know, from an AI maintenance point of view from, or from, from a general point of view, I think the pitfall could be, I mean, there are pitfall. I think mm -hmm. then over maybe naive approach to AI, sometimes I think there are simple rules. I mean, there is sometimes yeah, there is a simple if statement also works. If that happens, do this. It's no like big massive AI that required for that. But sometimes I think you know you think AI will be the solution for everything. But I think, so I think it's sometimes for at least in the, within the technology. I mean, do you have simple rules? Use them. They will always be better than the AI if there is a simple rule that you can use. Uh, so uh, so that is one part of it. And the other part is coming back to you, know, you still need to you know work on the use case. You need to prove what is. Uh, what can you do short term, but have a vision for the long term and, and, and work on the use cases and having a proper product management working on that. Mm -hmm. um, one final question, uh, prediction about the near future? Any final thoughts? <laughs> yeah, the near future, it's, uh, I mean, I, I think everyone agrees that we, we are you know, in, in a very starting point when it comes to the possibilities, possibilities AI and machine learning and also IoT. Uh, but I, yeah, it's 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 so important that uh, we are very clear on uh, what what are the customer values, and also it's not about hey we have this nice AI tool. It's about okay now the only thing you need to do now is when when we tell you this, well then it's the action that you should perform. But then there will be a lot of smartness going into that uh, uh -huh. decision. But for the end user, I mean it's just you know click on a button or something you know that is easy we need to bring it bring it down to uh, to make it reusable for the end user awesome uh Ricard, thank you very much mm. thank you for being part of the summit and mm. for accepting to conduct this interview with us mm. thank you my pleasure yeah, thank you very much mm.